Hey, you! I've been waiting all day to hear from you. How was your pregnancy checkup? Hi, Mom. I'm sorry. I just came back from the hospital and fell asleep. The doctor said that the baby was healthy. Stop talking nonsense. You know what I want to know. Hmm. Seeing how you avoided me like that, I knew it immediately. It's a girl again, isn't it? Mom, regardless of the gender of the child, it is still my child and your grandchild. I just accept that my grandchild is a boy. How many times do I have to say it again? You are such a bad wife. Your only duty is to deliver a son for my family, but you can't do it. This is already the second daughter. What are you going to do? But mom, I can't decide the gender of the baby. And whether the baby is a boy or a girl, it's still your grandchild. This time, gender is not a big matter anymore. What did you say? You mean I'm old-fashioned, backwards thinking, and sexist, right? No, mom. I never think that. I'm so sorry. But my husband doesn't need a son. He never talked about it. He is my son. What I want is what he wants. My son is the main heir of this big family. He will never have a daughter. I don't want to say more. Get yourself an abortion. You can take advantage of this while your husband is on a business trip and abort it. And then it can be said that you fell down the stairs or hit a car or something. I will testify for you. What? No, Mom. Please don't force me to do that. Only two more months until the baby is born. I cannot kill it. Mom, I'm begging you. <laughs> don't do this to your grandchildren. You have forgotten your place. You have no decision-making power here. I didn't like you from the beginning. I don't understand how you manipulated my son to make him insist on marrying you. Mom, I beg you. Please pity me. Pity your grandchild. Don't make me have an abortion, please. You can treat me as badly as you want. But please, don't hurt my kids. Hey, have I treated you so badly? I don't remember it that way. I have always cared for and pampered you and your stinky little daughter. You are so ungrateful to say that to me. I've given you two a place to eat and sleep. That's already too kind to useless people like this. I'm so grateful to you, but... But what? Are you expressing your dissatisfaction to me? Don't I just ask you to do all the housework? You don't have a job. You don't make any money. Shouldn't you do something like that to repay me? No, no. I never mean that. Or do you still think it was because I tripped your foot and caused you to fall so you had to go to the hospital for a checkup? I already made it clear. My feet were left there before because you walked carelessly and got caught on your own. I'm so sorry. It was my fault. How you say I treat your daughter horribly. You mean I abused her? Mom, I don't want to blame me for anything. It's just, my daughter told me that sometimes you would spank her just because she said she liked having a sister. I also saw some bruises, like being beaten with a whip on her legs after she returned from your house. Do you know anything about this? Oh, you cannot believe a single word of the child. Maybe she was so playful that she fell or fought over toys with her friends in class. And she was afraid of being scolded by you, and she made up stories like that. You are a mother. You must care for her, not ask me like this. Yes, Mom. I understood. I will be careful. But the little girl also said you never hug, kiss, or let her sit on your lap. She admires the other children who can play with their grandmother and always asks why you don't like her. I'm afraid that if it continues like this, she will be psychologically affected. So what? After all, she's just a useless girl like her mother. 
Later, she will only get married and have nothing to do with this family anymore. So why should I waste my feelings on her? Mom, please don't use that word in front of my daughter. And please don't say negative things about the birth parent in front of the kids. If she hears it, she'll think it's all my fault. <laughs> like it or not, that's the truth. No one in this house welcomed its birth. If you had listened to my advice about the abortion, she wouldn't have suffered this much. All because you were determined to give birth to it. It's all your fault. Please grant me your forgiveness. But I have suffered enough. From now on, I will no longer tolerate your harsh words towards the children and me. How dare you? Don't have an abortion. I'll kick you three out of this house. This family doesn't have excess money to feed parasites like you. So now, you must have an abortion and give me a grandson. Or you bring your ugly daughter out of this house right now. With all due my last respect, Mom, I will never kill my child. You don't have the right to kick me out of this house. My husband and I are not divorced, and we do not intend to be. So technically, this house is half mine, and he won't allow you to do this. Aren't you afraid he'll find out what you did to me and get mad at you? Are you threatening me? Ha! Huh, you are very audacious to say that. Don't you keep pretending to be a meekness and forebear daughter-in-law anymore? This is your real face, isn't it? I have always been patient with you until now, not because I pretend, but because I respect you as my husband's mother. But it's fine if you criticize me, but if you want to harm my babies, I definitely can't let it go. Huh? Then what are you going to do with me? Hit me? Scorn me? Or sue me? Do what you're gonna do. No, Mom. I won't act like that. I just need you to let us live together and never come to my house again. You are not entitled to give me orders. I didn't order you. I just wanted to have a deal with you. Deal with me? Do you have anything worth trading with me? I have your son's belief and love. You know that your son always trusts and loves me. If I showed him the messages you forced me to have an abortion, we all know how he would react. Hillary, you are being ridiculous. You should better not let my son know about this. Fine. I let you give birth to that baby and never touch her again. I will make you have to regret this. Yes. Thank you, Mom. I hope you can keep the deal. I promise that no one will ever know about this conversation today. Hey, Hillary. I heard that you gave birth yesterday, right? How do you feel now? Oh, hi, Mom. Luckily, I had a healthy delivery. The new baby is very cute. Oh, that sounds great. So, when will you go home from the hospital? I think I will come home in the next two days. I'm not assured about my daughter. I don't know if she can get herself get ready for the first day of school next week. Oh, you don't have to worry about it. It would be best to take care for your health and the newborn better. Your husband told me that the newborn is not gaining enough weight, so you should stay at the hospital more a few days to monitor her health. Um, Mom, actually, the newborn is... Oh, don't worry about the firstborn. I will take care of her for you in the next two days. Really? It's so surprising. I, I think you've changed. Yeah, Hillary, I think you said it right. Even if the babies are boys or girls, they are still my grandchildren, and I should care about them. I apologize for being so harsh on you earlier. I know you will not tolerate my mistakes, but I hope you will allow me to make up for you and the babies. Oh, Mom, I am very happy to hear that. My daughter will be very excited when she hears about this. Of course I forgive you. I have always wished that we could become a real family. Thank you, my lovely daughter-in-law. 
Yeah, it's the perfect time to build a true family. I am also very sorry for getting angry and saying bad words to you the other day. I hope you didn't take it seriously. It's okay. I was the one who was wrong first. I was very sorry for forcing you to have an abortion. I really can't believe I would say such cruel words. Fortunately, you did not listen to me. It's all over, Mom. You don't have to feel guilty about it anymore. I'm so curious. What could make you change your mind? <laughs> I was just thinking about what you said. Indeed, I have not loved my beautiful grandchild before, and I want to make up for that time for her. Besides, I also don't want my son to be bothered when there are conflicts between the two women he loves the most. I believe you don't want that either? Yes, Mum. I believe we can live together harmoniously. Well, I understand. You've just had a baby, so I'm sure you're tired. You just have to rest and remember to stay in the hospital to monitor your health for a few more days. I'll come and take my grandchild to my home. Don't worry. Yes. Thank you, Mom. Hi, Mom. The baby and I had just got home. Thank you for taking care of my daughter these days. Can I ask you to drive her to my home, please? My husband went to the company for urgent issues and I couldn't pick her up yet. Huh? What are you talking about? Your daughter hasn't been in my house for two days. I don't know where she is. What? Mom, but you said you would take care of her when I stayed at the hospital. Why don't you know where she is? Besides, it's been two days. Why didn't you tell me sooner? Hey, I said I would take care of her, but I said I would only take care of her for two days. That's because you stayed in the hospital for so long without hiring a babysitter. Why didn't you care about her? Why blame me? How, how can you completely shirk any responsibility like this? It was you. You told me to stay at the hospital longer. Oh no, my poor daughter. I need to call the police. I need to call my husband. Hey, calm down. He said he would be home in a minute. My daughter is missing. Should I calm down? No, my daughter. Why do you have to waste time, effort, and money to find her? Who can be sure she is still alive? Gloria, how can you talk like that? You're such a cold-blooded person. If anything happens to my daughter, I will never forgive you. I will curse you to death. How dare you call my name like that? You seem like you're from a bad upbringing. What can I expect from a stupid, poor girl that a single mother raised? Besides, she just got lost while playing on her own. Didn't I purposely throw her out on the street and you told me I was cold-blooded? So why didn't you tell me earlier? Because you didn't ask me about her. What kind of mother would leave her child to someone else to look after and then ignore it? The kid got lost. That's all because of you. Yeah, you're right. The child is missing because of me. Because I trusted you so much that I gave her to you. Hey, Hillary, calm down. This is not a time to blame one another. Yes, I need to find her. Where did the last time you met her? No, Hillary, I didn't mean you should go to find her. It's just that we can't tell if she's starved somewhere or she's been sold. We shouldn't waste our time looking for it. You should give birth to a new one. 
I have a feeling you will have a son this time. Shut up! How dare you talk about my daughter like that? Don't you have the slightest concern for my daughter? How could you say such scary things? Even now, do you still want to have a grandson? Didn't you promise not to harm the children and let us live in peace? And I still kept my promise. I promise not to touch you and the newborn baby. Look, you two are still healthy. You, you are so shameless. You clearly said that you wanted to live peacefully with me, didn't you? Why are you doing this? <laughs> you are such an idiot. Do you think I'll ever humbly apologize to you? I just did this so you can relax your vigilance and let me pick her up. If she disappears, you'll have to have another baby, and I'll have a chance to have a grandson. What? That's all your plan? Just to have a grandson? It is really scary, Gloria. So what? You can't do anything now. Be obedient and give birth to another child. My grandson can't wait any more. My husband has already come home. Wait. Oh my God. That's my daughter. <laughs> he brought our daughter. Come home. What? It can't be true. I dropped her far away from home. Gloria, I really wanted to live in harmony with you, but now it seems that will never happen. My husband said he knew everything you did. No. You are such a liar. You promise not to let him know anything. Yes, I still keep the promise. I am not the one who told him about this. My daughter did. What? How could he find her? I was careful. It turns out he came to the company to pick our daughter up. She said that yesterday you drove her to a park that was very far away from my house, and dragged her out of the car, and drove away. She cried and called out your name, but you didn't stop. She was very scary. But fortunately, a colleague of my husband's walking in the park recognized her, and took her home to care for her. No, no, it's impossible. My husband's phone was run out of batteries yesterday, so the coworker couldn't call him until this morning. As soon as he arrived at the company, my daughter told him everything. He is furious now. You, it was because of you. Since you appeared, my obedient son has completely changed. If it weren't for you giving birth to two daughters, I wouldn't have come to this step. Gloria, you're so obsessive about it. Besides, I never said that the newborn is a girl. What, really? You mean that the newborn is a boy? Do I have a grandson? Oh my God, it's unbelievable! Why didn't you tell me sooner? I wouldn't have treated you so harshly if I had known this. Oh, my beloved daughter-in-law. Yes, Gloria. My newborn child is a boy. But he is no longer your grandson anymore. What are you talking about? Of course I'm his grandmother. No, Gloria. My husband and I have decided to never allow you to come near, touch, talk to, or even look at our children again. We cannot let our children come into contact with a cruel, autocratic, sexist person like you. No, no way! You can't do that. You're lying. My son will never do this to me. Actually, this is his decision first. You should feel lucky that my daughter didn't get hurt. We would have sued her for child abuse if she was in pain. No, Hillary. Please, why can't I text my son anymore? 
He has blocked you already. And now, it is my turn. No! No, please, Hillary, I'm really sorry. Hillary, from the bottom of my heart, I am so sorry. Please let me see my grandson. I promise not to harm you or the kids anymore. Please forgive me. After that, my mother-in-law came to the house to meet and apologize to us. But my husband refused to meet her face to face and sent her away. She cried and begged me to help. But honestly, I couldn't forgive what she did to the kids and me. My husband decided to cut ties with her and move to another place. I heard that when she heard that we were moving, she went to our friend's house to ask for our new location, but no one would tell her. Now I am very happy with my fulfilling life. My husband still loves me and the kids very much. Even though it was a bit difficult at first, we overcame it and are still together. Hey, Mildred, you have a bit of time to talk. Oh, Sandra, what is it? I'm really busy with the wedding preparations. The date is set three months from now. I don't have time for this. Have a little common sense, would you? Yeah, really sorry. I know you're busy. It's about that marriage. We got the wedding invitation. It has Frank's name on it, but I don't see my name anywhere. Is this some kind of print error or something? You're not serious. There's no printing error. I had no intention of inviting you, sorry to say. Huh? Uh, why not? I'm your sister-in-law. Obvious, isn't it? It's because you were working at that nightclub back in the day. I mean, please, to invite someone who used to work at a house of ill repute, as my friend would say? My god, how could I invite someone like that to my wedding? That would bring absolute shame to my wedding. Shame? You're right. When I was in my 20s, I briefly worked at a club. But I had to. My parents had passed away and I had to make money to put my little brother through school. And like I said, it was just for a short time, just to get back on our feet. I quit that long time ago. I don't think I did anything wrong. Whatever the reason, I just can't stand a woman who uses her body to make money and work a proper job to get by. It's your presence alone. I just can't stand you being here. I know you loathe my past behavior. And I have not forgotten how you abused me with your derogatory comments. But this... This is going a little too far, don't you think? I was willing to forget all that and just congratulate you on such a wonderful occasion. That's all I wanted. I was just planning to celebrate this happy occasion is all. Oh, so you were going to attend a wedding for which you weren't even invited? Oh my god, are you a party crasher too? Wow, I didn't realize that you were suffering from delusions. Listen up, Sandra. My folks are so naive that they go along with your innocent sounding explanations, but me? I, I will never accept you as my sister-in-law. So there, your hostess types that use your body to trick men? To me, such a person is the worst of the worst in our society. That's pure discrimination. I don't really care. The fact is, I have no intention of inviting you to the wedding. So just get that thought out of your little head. Just send my brother to the wedding and you stay home. I don't want someone like your coming to the wedding and ruining the happiest day of my life. Got that? I don't want you near anywhere near the wedding. The reception or the party afterwards. Got that? I would never disrupt such a happy occasion. It would look bad if I said I didn't invite you simply because I didn't like you, so... I told everyone my husband to be that you were sick. If the other relatives ask, you tell them the same, you got it? You try something stupid and sneak in or something, you'll regret it. Alright, I understand. I won't be able to attend because I'm sick. Is that what you want to hear? I'll have Frank and Ted alone. Finally got it through your stupid little head, I see. You just stay home and look after the cat. Do you even have a cat? LOL. <laughs> yes, what is it? Looks like you've been messaging me all day. What's up? Wasn't your wedding today? Finally, I've been trying to reach you forever! Hey, what's going on? 
Uh, what are you talking about? Most of my relatives aren't here. And the people from work, only about half of them showed up. Everyone said that they suddenly fell ill or that some urgent matter came up. At this rate, the family on my side will be practically empty. Oh no, that's awful. How could this happen? What's going to happen with the wedding ceremony? Wonder if you can even go through with it. You seem so calm. What the hell did you do? This isn't normal. How could some people cancel the last minute like this? You had a hand in it, right? You went behind my back and got back at me for not inviting you. I knew you would pull some dirty trick. Please, I would never do such a thing. The only thing I can recall doing is... Talking with your grandmother and telling her that I wasn't attending because you would be offended, that's all. That was yesterday. What? Why did you tell her that? And why'd you even talk to her? Well, she called to ask what I was going to wear to the wedding. She said she didn't want to show up wearing something exactly the same. I told her that you asked me not to attend, to say I was sick. Why do you have to tell the truth? You should have just said you didn't want to attend. I'm sorry, I'm just honest, not a very good liar. That's why no one is here. You had to go blabbering your mouth. I have no idea why, but my grandmother has taken a shine to you. So I bet she figures if you don't attend, she won't either. She's just being a stubborn old lady. That pig-headed old pag. Your grandmother is so nice and a very strong old woman. When I told her I wasn't even invited. Well, she said what you did was despicable and she could not forgive you even if you're her granddaughter. I think that the other relatives probably felt the same way as your grandmother and decided not to attend. Of course it is. They all look up to her. I really don't see why. Anyway, she has this spell over them. They will do anything that old battle axe says. But I can't believe almost all the relatives declined to attend. You really have a popularity issue, Mildred. What the hell am I going to do? And why the hell didn't the people from my office show up? How the hell did you, a former club hostess, sweet talk them into going along with this? Uh, you keep bringing that up about my past. Hey Mildred, you work for Ace Corporation, right? The wife of the president of that company. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. Well, she's the owner of that club I used to work at. Huh? You're not serious. The president's wife is that? Yes, yes, years ago, when I was struggling, she treated me like her daughter. Oh, yeah, and when she heard I was not attending the wedding because I was supposed to be sick, she even went out of her way to come visit me and help out, thinking I was bedridden or something. That's when I told her what had happened and why I wasn't really sick. So, that's probably why she declined to attend the wedding. I can understand her feelings. She too started out as a club hostess and worked her way up and eventually started her own club. If you are so adamant about not having a former club hostess to attend, well, how could a current club hostess, a club owner as a matter of fact, attend? She figured you'd be offended if she showed up, probably afraid she might ruin the wedding for you. Well, so she won't attend, but why the hell will the other people attend then? She doesn't need to attend, but why the rest of them? They should have no problem attending. Probably the same reason that your grandmother gave. The president is totally committed to his wife, so, you know. I remember when I was working as a hostess there, and the president used to come to the club almost every night. He probably paid her tens of thousands of dollars over the years, and then eventually married her. I'm sure she told him about all this, and it probably infuriated him. He probably decided not to attend if his loving wife was not going. As for the other staff members, figure it would be kind of difficult for the employees to attend when the CEO is declining to attend. What's more, a lot of the top managers at company are regular customers at the club. They bring clients there on occasion. But don't get me wrong, this is all just speculation, of course. I have no idea how a big corporation like that works. I'm just a housewife and an ex-club hostess. What do I know? I'm so sorry. I've never really worked an honest day in my life. I really don't know anything. So you're saying that I didn't invite you, so... They're all going on strike by not attending? Well, maybe that's being a bit overdramatic, but yeah, you're not wrong in your assessment. So, does that mean that if you convince them otherwise, they change their minds and they'll attend? If that's the case, please talk to them and persuade them to attend, please. And the other relatives, get them to attend too. Hold it. First, explain this whole situation to my fiancé. 
Please, get over to the wedding hall right away. Uh, why would I do that? Huh? Think about it. Why would I go out of my way to help you? I thought you said you would never consider me a relative. A sister-in-law. You remember that, right? That means we're not related at all. We are complete strangers. So, as a complete stranger, why would I do all that for you? It makes no sense. Sorry, that's too much of a hassle. Huh? Hold on one second, Sandra! And besides, why would I go to a wedding I wasn't even invited to? People would think I was delusional if I attended. How embarrassing. I just couldn't do that. I don't even have an official invitation. Sorry, I just can't help you out. Don't worry about that. I'll invite you right now. I'll send you an invitation right this second. So, please. Now? I think it's a little too late for that. Can you really get my place ready in time? Oh, yeah. I forgot. A whole bunch of people just canceled. So you have plenty of seats, lol. But I don't want a second-hand seat. Wouldn't look good. Sorry to be so picky about these things. Just get over here! You can pick your own seat! Uh, I mean, I'll have a special seat ready for you right up front. With the company president, if you like. You can come with your husband. I'll invite you officially as my sister-in-law. Please, I'm begging you! Hmm, what am I to do? But there's just one problem. Since I was all alone and had nothing to do, I decided to go on a little trip. I'm just here at the beach. Nice weather, by the way. Plan to drive back later in the afternoon. Maybe stop off at that nice little cafe down the coast. Even if I was to head over there now. I mean, I don't even have a dress to wear. Not even a wedding gift. I can't very well go there in my beach outfit. That would really be a spectacle, wouldn't it? LOL. I'll have all that ready for you. And don't worry about the wedding gift. There's no need. I'll pay all travel expenses. I don't care how much this will cost. What's important is the wedding. Please, help me out here. Hmm, what am I to do? Let me think about it. Nah, I'll pass. The wedding ceremony. No thanks. Not gonna make it. Sorry. What? You're not serious. Please, you can't do this! Ever since I married your brother, you've been treating me like trash. I have no obligation to help you now. I mean, really? Why would I even do that? If no one shows up at your wedding, it's all your fault, right? You have no one else to blame but yourself. All this has nothing to do with me. Work it out yourself. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Stream me along as if you're going to help. How could you be so cruel, you evil woman? So sorry, lol. I use my womanhood as a weapon to con people. The most despicable kind of woman there is, lol. Okay, have a nice wedding and a good life. See ya. I heard the wedding went as planned, but half the room was empty on her side of the family, and none of her co-workers showed up. Apparently, the whole atmosphere was pretty depressing. As a matter of fact, the environment was so bad that a lot of people left early. By the end of the reception, only family members were left, most on the bride's side of the family. But worse, the groom's family was taken aback by the reception Mildred got that they had second thoughts about their son marrying such a woman. And that pre-planned after-wedding party was subsequently cancelled. Everyone left after the short reception party. The next day, Mildred came barging into her home yelling and screaming, but... My husband and his parents gave her a real dressing down, and she subsequently left, hanging her head in shame. As a result of all this, the marriage disintegrated and Mildred left home. That was the last I heard from her, but I'm sure she's doing fine on her own. As for me, well, I no longer have to put up with her criticisms, so my stress level has subsided drastically. Now I'm surrounded by people who truly love and understand me.